Thanks. I really appreciate this. See you tonight. Forget something? Yeah. My better judgment. All I asked you to do was drop off the camera on the way to the office. Oh, you don't mind if I observe a real crime buster in action, do you? Yeah. Might even learn something. <laughs> Did anybody check Liz's office by any chance? Oh, Sergeant Williams is very thorough. Yeah. Her gun was missing, am I right? Well, that all depends on your point of view. It was missing from her desk, but it was not missing from the trunk of her car. Where shrewd killers always dispose of their murder weapons. Okay, so somebody took the pictures from here. Mm -hmm. Flower, just like those, was out of focus in the foreground. The angle is perfect, and the apartment has been vacant. And you might think that the police would be interested in this. Well, right now, Sergeant Williams is very happy with his arrest and uh, with himself. Uh-huh. But I was wondering... What if the photographer and the victim were in on some sort of scheme together? Otherwise, how would the photographer know when to take the photos? Yeah. But if it was going to be blackmail, why send the pictures to the wives? You'd send them to the husbands. I can't answer that. Ah. Yeah. You haven't forgotten about dinner at Mother's Friday. No, I've tried, but I can't. Would you like my mother? I love your mother. I just don't like her rich friends. Yeah, you're just going to have to get used to being around rich people. Yeah, I'd like to have one of them adopt me as long as it doesn't include dinner. Ooh, ooh. You got look, it. See the men inside the condo? You can't really get a good look at them until they get framed right inside the French doors. I'll bet you anything that Sharon Fleming got them into position for somebody in this apartment to take their pictures. What do you think? I think I would like to see the inside of that condo again. Mr. Ashton, mm -hmm. Jack Matthews. Now, I understand you heard the gunshot the night of the murder. That's right. Uh-huh. You sure that's what you heard? Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you have your television on at the time? I don't have a television. Disturbs my birds. Oh. Oh, so first you heard the gunshot, then you heard the door slam. Absolutely. Gunshot like that? Well, yeah, just like that. What happened? What? The gunshot you just heard? That was a door slam. No way. He couldn't tell the difference between a gunshot and a door slam from in there. So he assumed the gunshot came first. Yeah, and if it didn't, that means there was someone in here who shot Sharon Fleming right after Liz Shelby slammed the door on her way out. Which could be our phantom photographer proving my theory. And that could be her. I thought I heard somebody in the apartment when I was over there. Jack! You must have interrupted her when she was cleaning off her prints. The woman is incredibly cheap. I mean, to go back for her cleanse. No, that's the only place she left her prints. Look, you stay out here. This is the way she'll try and come out. Yeah? What is it? Did you see a woman come through here? I heard somebody get off the elevator a minute ago. Stay back, I'm a cop. Sure, this woman is a real pro. She picks the lock to get in here. She cleans up after herself like an expert. And she knows how to hotwire a car. So you think she's the one that shot Sharon Fleming? Well, I surely wouldn't rule her out. Yeah, but one of the wives had to have been there earlier that evening. Why? Because Liz said she saw an antique earring by the phone, like the kind of antique jewelry that these women wear. But the earring was gone when the police arrived. The photographer took it to cover up for her partner. What partner? Well, all the wives had alibis for the time of the murder, so the photographer and one of the wives must have conspired to kill the mistress. For what possible reason? I don't know that, Jack. That's why these things are called mysteries. <laughs> See, what we gotta do is we gotta find some connection between those three women. Does this mean we're on the same page here? 
Ah, well, let's just say I'm getting very interested. Mm. Now, I'm going to take the manager downtown. I'm showing him some mug shots. We'll see if we found... <laughs> he saw that woman in this building. Don't forget, dinner at Mother's Friday night is black tie. You got a blue tie? What about a blue tie? So, what's up with our big store? The lawyer's in the timeshare, mistress. A fresh angle. Fresh? Yeah. Cool. Every station in town is having a field day. Oops, it's about that time. It has been decided that Friday will be the day for the preliminary hearing of Liz Shelby. The accused murderer have been very quiet. That's disgraceful. She didn't even call her a suspect, for Pete's sake. Accused murderers implies that she is a murderess that has been accused. Questionable journalism, but big ratings. All right, all right, all right. Just how fresh is your ink? Liz Shelby is innocent. <laughs> That's a funny one. Very funny. All right, seriously, what is it? Shouldn't do it. Don't do this to me. We've got one of the sexiest stories of the year, and you want to turn us into court TV? Daryl, I'm surprised at you. Use a little integrity. Hey, when you found me in film school and offered me this job, not once did you mention integrity. And why do I have to be different from anyone else in television? Because you are different. Francis, you dropped the ball on this one, and we're both out of a job. Don't worry, Daryl. We're going to prove her innocence. You do that. I'll be sending out resumes. You got nothing on me. So either book me or let me go. And I'm saying nothing else until I talk to a lawyer. You know me, Lou. I don't kid around. You don't sign that statement, I tell your partners how much you've been holding out on them. Get the pen back when he's done. 